When Narcissus Collide, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I'm often asked, H.G., can two narcissists come together? The short answer is, yes, they can. You might get a situation where two narcissists are actually friendly with one another. They're not genuinely friends because, of course, their interaction is based upon what the other can provide to the other. But it's such that the nature of their dynamic is that they can both provide the prime aims to one another and, because they aren't with one another that often, their interaction is a harmonious one. They don't pose threats to one another's control. So to the outside world, it looks like a meaningful friendship. Two narcissists can come together in a familial relationship. For instance, it's fairly common for there to be a narcissist parent and a narcissist child. After all, one will invariably lead to the creation of the other. It might be the case that narcissists come together within a workplace or as part of a business arrangement. And, of course, they can also come together as part of a romantic coupling. I've explained in my videos when narcissists collide parts one and parts two the varying permutations between certain subschools of narcissists to help you understand what the outcomes are across the various fields of romantic, social, work, familial, etc., and how they deal with one another. In many instances, the relationship is harmonious to begin with because of the implementation of the golden period from one narcissist to the other. But eventually, it turns into a tempestuous relationship as a consequence of that innate need for control and the drawing of fuel. And thus, it gets off to a good start, but soon descends into chaos. In other instances, there is something called narcissistic cementation, where two narcissists come together, and essentially, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Essentially, the narcissism of the two individuals recognises that they will actually achieve more by working together than falling out. That's not to say that it is a smooth ride, but invariably the difficulties that arise tend to be smoothed over, kept hidden, dealt with on the down low, so that the coupling is far more effective. An excellent example of that takes place in House of Cards, the British version, where Francis Urquhart explains to his wife that he's going to embark upon an affair with Matty Storin, the journalist. The fact that he tells his wife about this isn't him asking for permission, but he's telling her that this is what is going to happen. She, as a narcissist, recognises that rather than keep it secret from her, she is being afforded control by him telling her about it. And she recognises that the fact that he's going to conduct an affair with this journalist will present him with greater opportunities power-wise which would benefit the two of them in their marriage. Accordingly, she gives her approval to this. Therefore, it doesn't threaten her need for control. For most people, the suggestion that your intimate partner is going to go and have an affair would be abhorrent to them. They would be alarmed by it. And indeed, certain narcissists would react badly to it because it would be a threat to control. But in the scenario that I've mentioned, although it's a fictional one, those two narcissists have cementation whereby he recognises that rather than keep it hidden from her and risk it blowing up at a later juncture, that it is better to tell her that this is what he intends to do, and she, in effect, gives her blessing to it, because she has been brought in to his planning, and thus that gives her a sense of control, and the fact that she approves of it also affords with the sense of control, because her narcissism recognises that because she's been involved in the plan and it will result in a bigger gain for the two of them, then that is deemed acceptable. A similar situation has arisen between Bill and Hillary Clinton. 
Hillary Clinton, many years ago, once memorably stated, there are worse things than infidelity that can happen in a marriage, which demonstrates that her own narcissism has caused her to recognise that Bill's philandering is just part of the way that he is, and, so long as it isn't too obvious, then she will go along with it, because their union stands to achieve a greater gain. A piffling matter, such as Bill shoving little Bill where it ought not to go, isn't going to get in the way of the empire and the power that they wield in tandem together. Thus, these two narcissists have come together, and there is narcissistic cementation. In their union, you have Bill as an upper greater elite. This means that he's a master manipulator. Oodles of charm, thinking ahead, planning, calculating, assessing. He's an elite, which means he's an amalgam of both somatic and cerebral. We know that he has a strong somatic element as a consequence of his love of shagging, to put it bluntly. Hillary Clinton is upper mid-range cerebral. To her, the matter of sex isn't as important as it is to Bill, hence part of the reason why, ultimately, she had no difficulty with his various alleged affairs. She is an upper-mid-range narcissist, isn't aware of what she is, but she recognises the benefit of power. She understands how much she requires that and wealth, and this, of course, is driven by her own narcissism. There are plenty of shady dealings, to put it mildly, in relation to the Clintons and their conduct. And I'm not going to go into that detail here. That's for another occasion. But essentially there is narcissistic cementation between these two, whereby an aware narcissist and an unaware narcissist causes the two to come together for the purposes of ensuring that the outcome is greater for the two of them. And their differing forms of narcissism deem this entirely acceptable so that they stay together even when that union might be challenged, for instance, by the infidelities of Bill Clinton. And we have an excellent piece of footage, which is from a number of years ago, but it's an oldie book goodie, which shows you the interaction between these two and why it is that they have continued to stay together. Here comes the footage. Mm -hmm. And of course they're alongside the curtains as they watch this moment. It's not always been easy. Oh no, he didn't. First lady, she's talked about some of the constraints and they say they're looking for not only to sleep. Mm -hmm. And of course they're alongside the curtains as they watch this moment. It's not always been easy. Oh, no, he didn't. First Lady, she's talked about some of the constraints, and they say they're looking for not only to sleep. There you have it. The piece of footage, which you've probably seen before, but it was the presidential inauguration that took place when Donald Trump was named the 45th President of the United States of America, taking place back in January 2017. What was captured on television was when Trump's daughter Ivanka walked out. Now, Ivanka Trump is an attractive woman. You can see that. She's physically appealing. And as you witnessed, Bill Clinton is watching her as she walks away. Utilising the narcissist's stare belying his sense of entitlement, he is perfectly content to focus on Ivanka Trump, savouring what he sees. Undoubtedly, various thoughts running through his mind in relation to wanting a piece of that. He is so preoccupied with his laser-like focus upon her that he nods approvingly, as if having a conversation with himself, as if to say, yep, she get it. And... Everybody else is looking in another direction, but he is focused on Ivanka Trump. He doesn't at first notice that he has caught the attention of his wife, Hillary. 
she turns, in effect, to find out what is Bill up to and finds that he is staring elsewhere. Interestingly, Hillary Clinton doesn't even need to look in the direction of where Bill is looking to know what he is up to. And she doesn't turn and glance at him and see that he's preoccupied and look back. Instead, she focuses her own stare upon him. This is because his preoccupation with Ivanka Trump wounds Hillary Clinton because his focus is elsewhere. Hillary Clinton's facade management is such that she's not going to knee Bill in the bollocks and say, you dirty bastard, how many times have I told you not to stare at younger women? Her facade manager prevents that from happening. Instead, her own narcissism seeks to assert control over Bill as the intimate part of primary source by gaining his attention by focusing her own stare on Bill. What then happens shows the predatory nature of Bill Clinton, his awareness, and the way that he has Hillary also under control. He glances and sees that she's staring straight at him. Notice there's no flustered response from him. Many men who may well have been caught staring at another woman would uh, hastily look away or make some excuse or say, yeah, I was just looking at Colonel Conkerbollocks across the way there. Been a while since I've seen him. They might be met with an unimpressed rolling of the eye, but at least they've broken the gaze and their other half may well then let matters lie. But here, good old Bill, he's not one who's told what to do. In the circumstances, he then picks up that Hillary is staring at him. But he simply doubles down. And after glancing at her, he dismisses her. He asserts control by staying in a position of withdrawal from Hillary, even though he's next to her. He's in a position of withdrawal because he's not interacting with her. He doesn't offer an explanation or an apology. He's above that. He's Bill Clinton. He doesn't need to do that. His mindset is, she's lucky that she's got me. She's done very well out of me. She knows how it is. She knows that I like a bit of skirt. She understands she has to put up with it. So I don't have to explain myself to her, and I'm certainly not stopping looking, because I'm enjoying the view from over here. And thus brilliantly, Bill demonstrating his supremacy stares at Ivanka Trump, realises that he's being watched by his wife, gives it a quick side eye, and then goes back to what he was doing. It's also indicative of the nature of the relationship between Bill and Hillary Clinton that when he continues to ignore Hillary, she realises there's little point in continuing to stare at him. Her own narcissism recognises, pointless, not able to bring him under control directly by staring at him, dismiss him, and thus she turns away. Thus, these two narcissists that operate process of cementation are both able to maintain control over one another. Bill does so by noticing her and then ignoring her. Thus, he asserts control by staying in a position of withdrawal. Hillary asserts control at first attempting to do so directly by staring at Bill to try and stop him looking over at Ivanka Trump, but that fails. Her narcissism isn't able then to do anything further direct. Facade management won't allow it. It won't cause her, for instance, to reach out and put a finger under his chin and twist his head back where it should be looking. Or, as I mentioned earlier, grip his pods and say, or knee him in the pods and say you shouldn't be looking. She can't indirectly assert control over him. She's not going to bring to anybody else's attention the fact that he's eyeing up Ivanka Trump. That would, of course, threaten control further. And therefore, Hillary Clinton's own narcissism takes her to a position of withdrawal where she basically gives it a head shake as if to say, typical Bill, and dismisses it. And thus, that gives her that sense of control. So this is an excellent little interaction between an upper-greater narcissist and an upper-mid-range narcissist where they both maintain control in relation to one another and it's rather amusing to see the dynamic between the two of them and how Bill has never changed from being a randy old goat. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.